The man looked at her and asked if she could lie well. He said that the following was written about her. She was skilled in fraud, excellent intelligence, and excellent eloquence. He in turn listed many things that had been written about her. The girl, in turn, said that she had no idea what he was talking about. The young lady looked at him with an angelic expression and said that she had never lied. They sailed on a steamboat and headed for the island of Montevijas. The man looked at the young lady and with a smirk asked if it was true that she had never lied. The man said she frantically repeated these words during the redecision. She agreed with his words and said that the judge did not even try to swallow her words. She was surprised that such information was written on paper. He said that during the arrest, she repeated the same thing, and the young lady looked at him and said that his words hurt her. He looked at her in surprise and asked her name. He wanted to thoroughly study all the information about her and write everything down. The young lady was surprised that he was asking such basic things. He looked at her and said that she definitely didn't come from the outback. She smiled at him and asked if there were still people who didn't know her name. The man said that was the procedure and again told her to give her name. She smiled and said her name was Rosen Walker. The man said that there was a different name on the documents. She said it was the right name. The man looked at her and said that he was not interested in her real name. He needed her to tell him the name that was indicated in the document because he wanted to check with the information he had. She looked at him and said that her name was Rosen Howos. As planes flew by, leaflets with his image fell from the sky like rain. And at the moment when his voice sounded in the sky, broadcast on the radio, everyone raised their heads. The government knew very well how easy it really was to charm a person. A young and noble pilot, he became an excellent instrument in the anxiety and despair that the war brought with it. People needed Ian Connor. The man looked at her and asked what crime she was accused of. The young lady froze and did not understand what she was talking about. The man said that he would like to know the real reason why she is heading to Monty Island to the worst prison on earth. She said that she ran away several times in such a way that the pride of the Imperial Army was trampled. The man was not satisfied with this answer, and he asked why she initially went to prison. She looked at him and said that she was not to blame for anything. The man looked at her and said that his interrogation was a formal procedure. So her opinion didn't interest him. She shouted with rage that she was not one bit to blame for what she was accused of. She said that the truth is higher than the statement, since God knew everything. He looked at her with contempt and said that he was repeating himself again and said that he was not interested in her opinion. He wanted her to answer the questions directly. She looked at him with contempt and anger. She would like to tell him something, but a subordinate of the commander rushed into the room. The man was on edge and shouted to his commander. He was in shock and did not understand what his commander was doing at the moment. The man looked indignantly at his subordinate and said that he was having a personal conversation with the criminal. The young girl was so scared that she almost bit her tongue. The young man did not understand why his commander was doing such a thing himself. He said that it was this criminal who needed special attention. The young man looked at the commander and asked why he was creating extra work for himself, since he knew that the island sent the worst criminals. He looked at the girl in fear because he knew who she was. He didn't want his commander interrogating the young lady. He looked at her in fear and shouted that she was the witch of Alcafez. The young man did not understand why the commander called such a dangerous criminal for a personal conversation. He shouted that even if she looks like an ordinary ragged woman, she must not be vigilant, since she is a very ferocious criminal. The young man shouted that a girl at the age of 17 had killed her husband. They looked at the young lady with contempt and indignation. The commander ordered his subordinate to take the criminal away. She, in turn, said that she was not to blame for anything and that it was all a lie. She didn't know where they intended to take her. The young man pulled her by the hand and told her to hurry up. She knew that compared to the previous warden, these two were just gentlemen. She knew that they were playing with her like a cat and a mouse. This was their little battle. She knew that if she relaxed once, she would be immediately grabbed, and then it would be the end of her. The girl understood that she needed to find a loophole to escape. She walked and looked at the young commander and saw his keys. She knew that to prevent this from happening, she needed to win an easy battle with them. The commander asked if the party was over. The young man said that it was all over, and they could calmly lead the witch away without bumping into noble gentlemen. The commander said that the gentlemen were sailing for an excursion to the prison, and they would be interested in taking a look at the witch. 
The young man looked at his commander and said that the commander thinks so because he is unique and very brave, but other people are not like him. After the war, a lot changed. The ships, originally intended for military supply, were converted into passenger ships after the end of the war. The steamship that was once full of wounded soldiers, gunpowder smoke, and the sound of gunfire in the blink of an eye, turned into a place for luxurious parties accompanied by joyful music. The girl knew that this luxurious ship was now heading for the island of Monty. The island was considered a place so disastrous that it was already an achievement for a criminal to save his life there, and tourists also want to look at the place. Such a ridiculous sight could rarely be seen. The man said that something so foul-smelling would make everyone sick and only cause a stir. Even the corpses that were rotting during this time had a better smell. While they were saying all this, the girl felt bad. She did not want to listen to such details. The commander said that during the war, they themselves looked no better. The young man was at the factory and said that this was a completely different case. He claimed that while they were shaking with fear and saving lives, the girl killed her own husband. Unable to bear it, she said that he was very noisy and asked him to be silent. He was furious. The commander looked at Henry and asked him to control himself, since he believed that there was no point in wasting his nerves. The commander said that he sincerely apologizes for the bad manners of his subordinate. Henry was shocked and said that the commander should not let his guard down, as the woman could be a real witch. The commander told them to follow him because he wanted to show something. They went out onto the deck, and the woman frantically scanned the horizon. She saw a beautiful night view. That night the moon shone brighter than usual. The sight took her breath away. She looked spellbound at the beautiful view and realized that she had to become a world-famous criminal in order to see such beauty. She never thought that in her entire life she would see something beautiful. The man looked at the woman and said that she was able to escape by digging under Alcafez. She said that's how it happened. He was surprised and asked if it was true that she walked over the cliff naked. She looked at him and asked what answer he wanted to such a question. He said that he had heard rumors that she used magic during her escape. The man was frantic to find out if it was true. The last successful escape from Alcafez was accomplished by a witch, 36 years ago. Therefore, when the press first admitted her escape, people were sure that she was a witch. She knew that people are naturally afraid of things they cannot explain. They had an era when science was exalted, and magic, on the contrary, was persecuted. But traces of the ancient past still existed. Numerous tired witches simply hid in the most remote corners of the world, but still they did not die out. The girl looked at the man and said that if she were a witch, she would not have found herself in such a difficult situation, and they would not have dared to grab her, and no one would have been able to chain her. She looked at the men and asked if he didn't think this whole situation was absurd. The young man looked at his commander and told him not to believe her under any circumstances, since she was a skilled liar and all the words that came from her were lies. He said that during the hearing, she continuously shed tears and pretended to be a victim and almost wrapped the entire empire around her finger. The young lady called out to the young man and said that if she were truly a witch, she would have sewn his mouth shut from the very beginning. She said she had undergone a procedure to identify mana. She didn't understand what other proof they needed. The girl said that the country's military is so stupid that they can't even understand a simple fact. The young man was furious with everything the girl said. He was furiously angry and shouted at her, calling her all the bad words. The commander could not stand it and called his subordinate Henry. He ordered him to take his hands off the prisoner. The commander said that once again he gives vent to his feelings and continues to brawl, then he will be forced to report to his superiors. The young man was in shock and did not understand why he was being punished. The girl breathed out a sigh of relief. The commander asked the young man if he had brought what he asked for. The commander looked at the young lady and said that she was the most famous fugitive of the empire. He said that he doesn't care whether she lies or tells the truth. The man looked at her and said that he just wanted to remind her of some obvious things. Connor said she was a convict who had received her sentence. Her sentence was life imprisonment in the island prison. He looked at her intently and said that he had been ordered to escort her to the island and he also pointed out that she was not the first to escape from a heavily guarded prison. However, no one has yet managed to escape from the island. The girl was shocked and froze in place. He looked at her intently and said that it was simply impossible to get off the island, even for a witch. She looked at him intently and realized that, although politely, 
he was still putting pressure on her. She knew that they definitely had to have the keys to either the lifeboat or the handcuffs. She knew that if she wanted to escape, she needed to do it before arriving on the island. The young man called his commander and said that he had brought everything that he asked for. The girl froze when she saw that he had brought meat. She didn't understand why they needed meat. She looked at them intently and did not understand what they wanted to show. The commander took the tray of meat and told the girl to watch carefully. He looked at her and told her not to take her eyes off the sea, as he wanted to show what kind of sea they were sailing on. The young man smiled and told the witch to admire what sea they were sailing on and what monsters lived in it. He said that she simply had nowhere to run. She understood what was happening and the current situation. The commander looked at her and said that if she wanted to become a snack for monsters, she could board a lifeboat and go on new adventures. He came closer to her, holding a bunch of keys in his hand, and said that, from the looks of it, she would really like to have the keys. The girl looked at Ian Kenora and realized that he was not a gentleman. He looked at her intently and said that he hoped that she had now changed her mind. She looked at him closely and realized what a terrible situation she was in. This time, she realized that the warden could not be a gentleman. She also realized that, looking at such a person, he was completely different from the person from the leaflet. She didn't know how he treated ordinary people, but she knew that with her, it was different. She knew that, to some extent, she was just a rat. It was very difficult for her from such hopelessness. Sitting in her cell, she wondered if there was another way to escape. Her thoughts were interrupted by a woman's scream. She was surprised that someone called her. The woman looked at her and asked if she was serious about not telling. The girl was a little embarrassed and asked what she should talk about. The woman looked at her companion and said that she had a personal conversation with the commander. The girl said that she really had a conversation. The woman wanted to know what they were talking about. Rosen said her commander told her to forget about escaping. Maria was surprised and asked if he really said anything else. The girl was in shock and did not understand what the woman wanted to hear from her. A little girl watched their conversation from around the corner. The woman asked again if the commander had said anything. Rosen asked her if she wanted to hear anything specific. Maria said that Rosen was still young and pretty, and she went to his room, and he was young and terribly attractive. Maria said that she simply could not contain her wild fantasy. She wanted to hear everything in the smallest detail. Rosen was in shock and did not understand what Maria was talking about, since she was now in a very inappropriate state. Maria looked at Rosen and asked if there was something between them. Rosen was shocked and said he wouldn't do anything to someone as ragged as her. Maria said with a smile that all she had to do was pounce on Ian. Maria looked at the young girl and said that she had to do everything exactly as she did in Al Cafez. Rosen was embarrassed, but did not answer her friend. Rosen knew that the problem was not only with the commander, but also with the fact that the sea was teeming with dangerous monsters. Maria approached Rosen and asked if she was going to give up. Maria is a prisoner, for whom the nickname of a witch suits her much more than a young girl. If the guards ruled in non-prison cells, then Maria had all the power in the prison. If she did not like someone, then he did not live to see the expiration of his sentence. When Rosen was brought to Cafes, she had already become famous for one successful escape. Rosen worked hard to escape. Maria approached her and asked if she wanted to wake up all the guards with her noise. Rosen didn't know why. She approached her and thought it was most likely because of her fame. Maria was amazed and did not understand where the young fugitive was able to get a spoon. Because Marina liked her, the prisoners for whom she was in charge treated Rosen well and prison life was calmer than before. At that moment, Rosen did not understand what was the matter. But now, looking at Maria, she understands everything. Maria was frantic and wanted to know if the girl was going to give up her escape plan. Rosen looked at all the prisoners and realized that they needed her victory. They wanted her to trample the pride of the Imperial Army for show. Rosen smiled at her friend and said there was something she should know, that she would never give up. Rosen knew that for ordinary people, she was an idol. Maria smiled at her and said that this was a very good decision on her part. She looked at Rosen and tossed her a cigarette. She invited her to smoke a little. Rosen was in shock and did not understand where Maria got the cigarettes and matches from. Maria looked at the girl with the most calm expression and asked if she needed fire. Rosen sat and smoked a cigarette. She asked if Maria's commander wasn't originally an ordinary pilot. She said that in the war, he probably received a lot of awards and should have received an important post in the government. Rosen didn't understand what he had forgotten on this ship. 
because I knew that such work was not suitable for the Air Force. Maria smoked a cigarette and said that she had no idea why he was here. Maria suggested that he probably received some kind of injury and was demoted. Rosen said he looked fine. She knew that he was a perfect man. Maria smiled and said that to become a colleague, you don't have to lose a limb. Rosen was shocked and didn't know what she was talking about. Rosen, perplexed, told Maria not to say such nonsense. Maria laughed and said that she didn't care whether it was true or not. Maria said that now it does not matter, since they needed to pick up a man in order to get out of such a place with his help. Rosen said that this method only works on brainless men. Rosen said she doesn't know what the best course of action is at this point. She knew that she could easily steal the key, but she was not sure that she would be able to cross the sea because it was very dangerous. She knew that such a plan was not suitable. Of course there were problems, not only in her fears. She sat and thought through all possible actions on her part. Suddenly she heard some noise. Rosen yelled at everyone to be quiet and not distract her. She was confused by what she saw. She didn't understand what a child was doing in such a place. Rosen was in shock and did not understand how the girl was able to get down to them. She asked Maria if by any chance the girl had brought him cigarettes. Maria just smiled and said nothing. Rosen was shocked and did not understand how a child could be used for such purposes. Rosen shouted to the little girl and said that she could not walk alone in such a place. She didn't understand where her parents were and why they weren't looking after such a young girl. The little girl turned around in fright at the girl's scream. She ran towards the girl with a ball in her hands. Rosen was shocked and told her to immediately return to her cabin and not run to her. She ran up to the girl and greeted her. Rosen looked at the innocent child in amazement. The little girl said her name was Lila Rivel. Rosen realized who this girl was and asked if she knew Henry Revel. The little girl said with a smile that it was her uncle and asked Rosen if she knew him. Rosen looked at the girl and asked if she didn't know she wasn't allowed to come here. Rosen said, this is not a playground. The young girl was upset and almost cried. The girl said that she had already boasted to her friends that she was going to meet Rosen Walker. Rosen was surprised, but didn't say anything. The young girl said that this girl was the most famous runaway of the empire and a great witch. She said that's not what people were saying about her when they boarded the ship. Rosen was shocked. The little girl said that her grandfather was the captain of the ship, so she said that she could meet her but no one believed her. Rosen decided not to miss this opportunity and talk longer with the girl. Rosen looked at the little girl and said that she congratulated her since she had come to the right place. She said she was Rosen Walker. Henry told his commander that his work was again a headache because of the fugitive. The commander told his subordinate to think that they were going on vacation, since the island was only a turning point, after which they had a reverse course. He was a little surprised that people were willing to pay for such an excursion. Henry was a little surprised that the war was over and people were already bored and went to the island prison through the sea infested with monsters. The commander smiled at his subordinate and said that the end of the war had made him a young old man. Henry decided to talk about the witch. He said that she was also from Rio Riton. Henry said the captain needn't worry anymore. He said she was from the same town, but it seemed like she lived on the outskirts and then committed the crime. The commander said that he knew everything. Henry said he knew this because he wrote all the information in the report. The young man said that it seemed to him that because of this, the commander focused his attention on her. The commander looked into the distance and did not answer. That city was their homeland, their studies took place there, and their youth passed there. The commander first boarded a plane there, but there was also a bombing there during the war that turned the city into ruins. Henry said that in a way the woman was very lucky since her escape allowed her to get out of the city and escape death. The commander said that despite everything, she still faces a life sentence. Henry said that thanks to this she became famous and is heading to the island under the escort of Connor himself. The commander looked at him and said that what he said was correct. Henry said that he knew everything, but he was still surprised that she remained alive after such a sad fate for the city. He himself witnessed how the city was destroyed. He himself lost a lot there and he was overcome by emotions, since he knew that she was alive, and the others had died. He was saddened by the loss of his family's closest and dearest people. The girl was shocked that she was able to meet the great witch after all. Rosen asked the girl to be quieter, since she did not tell everyone who she was. The girl frantically wanted to know whether what they wrote about her in the newspapers was true. She asked if Rosen could do magic. 
Rosen looked at the girl and said that she had one question for her. She asked if she could answer it. The girl was a little scared. She was puzzled by the girl. Rosen said that if she answered, she would show her magic in return. Lila was in anticipation of the moment. She looked at the witch as if enchanted. Layla said that her grandfather told her never to comply with prisoners' requests. Rosen looked at her and asked if she really didn't want to see magic. Maria looked at everything that was happening in anticipation. Rosen looked at the little girl and said that she would not ask anything like that. She was just curious about something. Lila hesitated, but still agreed. Rosen was very happy and said that the girl was very good. Rosen looked at the little girl and asked if she knew Connor. Layla said that she knows him because he is a hero and the best pilot. Rosen asked if Connor and Lila were close. Lila said no, because he is very cold. Lila said that her uncle told her that although Ian does not show his feelings, he trembles very much with Lila because he knew her since her mother was alive. He said that Lila could consider him another uncle, but still Lila was not sure since he was cold towards her. Rosen looked at the girl and asked if the man was married or had a girlfriend. Layla said that he has no one. Layla said that other adults were fussing to get married as quickly as possible, but the commander did not think about it at all. Rosen wanted to ask about the girls in the man's room. Lila was a little surprised. She didn't understand what Rosen was asking about. Rosen realized that she could not ask such a young girl. But still they moved into themselves. She asked if Lila saw when the girls entered the man's room. Layla said she didn't see it. Rosen asked Lila if Connor was a very compassionate person. Rosen knew that for such services to his homeland, he should have received many awards and privileges. Layla looked at Rose and asked what compassionate meant. Maria said that this is the name of the feeling when she desires someone. For example, when you bring home a wet puppy to the future. Rosen looked at Maria in bewilderment. Maria added that, for example, when she starts crying, if she sees someone else crying, this is the feeling. Layla asked them with a smile if they were talking about love. Rosen said Layla got it right. Maria looked at Rosen and began to laugh because such conversations made a witch like her sweat. She said that such a sight was simply amazing. Rosen asked Maria to be quiet. Rosen still didn't think Ian could love anyone. She was sure that such a person was incapable of love. The little girl looked at Rosen and said that the man was very good because he was a hero. Rose said that everything was correct and thanked Lila. Rosen looked at the girl and said that she had enough of this and now it was her turn to fulfill their deal. Rosen said she needed something small. Lila said she had a coin. Rosen was very happy. Lila asked the girl what she would do with the coin. Rosen looked at the girl and asked if she didn't know what she was going to do now. She will do magic. Looking at the hand, the young girl was surprised, because I didn't expect to see this. Rosen showed the girl an empty hand and said she needed a mediator. Lila was happy and surprised that the coin had disappeared. Rosen said that she did not disappear, and now there will be magic. In the blink of an eye, the coin appeared. Rosen showed it to the little girl. She gave her the coin and said that from now on this very coin remained happy. Layla was surprised and immensely happy. Rosen looked at Lila and said that it would be their little secret. But at sunset, the coin will remain gold. She asked the little girl in return not to tell anyone, otherwise the magic would dissipate. Maria was surprised and asked the girl what she just used. Was it really real magic? Rosen said that in no way was it magic. It was just a simple trick. Rosen said the little girl would also later find out it was just a trick, but Maria said she doubted the girl would believe it. Rosen began talking about running away with Maria. She didn't know what she could do in such a situation, since there was water everywhere and there was no place to go. But still, she was sure of the opposite. She knew that there was some way out. No one knew if it really existed, but they said that there was a place on the planet where they hid from the whole world. Witch's Island was called the Witch Island Valrurgus. Maria looked at her friend and said that she herself didn't know about him. She said that it was widely spoken among people, and it turned out that it was not far from Monty Island. Rusin said that not everyone can get there. She said that it's called the Witch's Place for a reason. She knew that the people living there would shout welcome to them, Maria looked at her and said that it is easier to deceive children by pretending to be pitiful. Maria looked at the girl and said that it would be nice for her if she tried this method on the commander. Rosen said in a sad voice that Maria was right, since they had no other options. Rosen realized that she needed to use the hero and get a ticket of compassion from him, that this was quite doable, and such methods had still worked on other men. But she doubted that this could be done with Connor, 
since he was a military pilot and even a hero who received many awards. This is the complete opposite of her, but still she was confident that she could reach his level. She knew that feeling and superiority over someone is sweeter than love. And she also knew that such a feeling is much easier to achieve than love. The young ladies looked at each other sadly. They knew they had to carry out an impossible plan. The man looked at his subordinate and hoped that in the future everything would be okay with him. But he also knew that such reactions would still find him. The young lady said that a moment may come when the feeling will burst out, and the feeling will be experienced by no one in particular, and for this reason the feeling will be impossible to contain. The man was perplexed and did not understand what to do. The woman said that such moments need to be interrupted, but you need to listen in silence so that your opponent can verbally express everything that was in his soul. He knew he needed to give an appropriate response, but he couldn't say anything. Connor looked at the young man and said that they had been outside for too long and they needed to go inside. The young man looked at his commander and said that it was outrageous to order a war hero to transport a witch. Connor said that there was nothing like that, and since his task as a military man is to follow orders. The young man looked at the commander and asked if he would be given a new post after such work. Connor said that he couldn't tell him for sure because he didn't know what could happen. The young man said that only landmen and people from the house of Ryareton despise him. Henry believed that it was because of them that they were now forced to go through such torment. The young man understood that they were trying to put a lot on his commander. Henry looked at his commander and said that he allegedly failed to protect his homeland and therefore they demanded that he demonstrate that he was punishing the witch. The young man said that if he could take the girl who was the only one to escape from the city, Henry said that the commander needs to show everyone how he exposes her on the island, and after which everyone will close their eyes to the loss and begin to support him again. The young man looked at the commander and said that this was just a small show, after which he would be a hero of the empire, without blemishes or flaws. Henry said that when they finished with such work, the commander would need to rest a little and live for himself. The young man looked at the commander and thought that only a brilliant path awaited him ahead. Connor didn't know what a brilliant path he actually had. And the path is strewn with thorns. Only after the end of the war, walking through the triumphal arch in his uniform. Connor realized what it means to be a hero. A huge crowd chanted only his name. However, he did not feel any joy in front of them, but still he smiled as he passed through the arch. He vaguely remembered those moments. And sometimes I wondered if he smiled at all. He knew that it was impossible to protect everyone, and he also knew that there was no absolute victory anywhere. Therefore, it was very difficult for him. The young man looked at his commander and said that he was not a god, and everyone knew that a commander must always choose between two evils. The young man told the commander not to pay attention to anything, and he also added that he did not have to participate in everything since he could do it for him. Connor looked at the young man and said that he would do everything himself and asked him not to pay attention and focus on recovery. The young man looked at his commander and said that he was no longer a patient. Embarrassed, the young man said that it seemed to him that he really didn't need to do this. The young man said that the commander was not to blame for anything, since at that moment all the approved aviation strategies were a complete sick gamble, and if it weren't for him, everything would have gone to ruin. He kept wondering whether he was to blame for what happened or not. Even if he was not to blame, then who in the end will bear responsibility for the death of innocent people? Before leaving, he was assigned to escort prisoners to the island of Monty. A higher-up told Connor to keep an especially close eye on Rosen. He knew where she came from and knew that she was the only one who survived. I looked at all the information, as well as at her herself, and saw a healthy and whole girl. He sat and stubbornly studied the documents. Rosen was shocked by the man's behavior and did not understand why he called her if he himself was sitting and intently looking at the documents. The man looked up from the documents and froze in place. He didn't say anything. Rosen in turn asked if he heard her. The young lady did not understand why he called her at all, since he did not pay any attention to her. He was perplexed and just looked at her silently. Hastily, he said that he had been listening to her, and he said that they needed to continue their conversation. He started talking about sharks and their diet. Rosen couldn't stand it and yelled at him with all her anger. She screamed and asked him to stop. Rosen was furious and screamed that he understood everything, because I thought that he went too far with lectures about sea monsters. 
She didn't understand why she had to listen to the same information day after day. She was furious and asked if he thought she was a fool. The man looked at her and calmly said that he was an idiot and a hero did not think about the consequences. He said that if she started thinking with her head, she might not dare to do something like that. He sincerely wanted her to change her mind. She looked at him and asked with a grin if he was saying that she doesn't use her head. He looked at her and said that she was brave, and some people probably thought of her as a dark hero. The girl looked at the man and asked if she was a heroine or an idiot for him. He looked at her and said that she was crazy for escaping. Connor asked her and asked her not to be so aggressive. Rosen looked at him and asked if he thought she should have sat quietly for fifty years. She believed that such behavior would not be the best on her part. She looked at him and asked what she should have done. She knew that over the past conversations with him, he showed great interest in her. When she spoke all sorts of nonsense, the man looked at the young girl with bewilderment. And he didn't tell her anything. She knew that it was better for her to talk a little, since it was better than when she cried and played the victim. She looked at him and realized that he had fallen into her trap. She desperately wished it were so, so that she could use it for her own purposes. He said that if she had admitted her guilt from the very beginning and later in prison had behaved calmly, and not as aggressively as she did, she could have easily commuted her sentence. Rosen looked at him and said that in that case she would have died faster. She looked at him and said that no matter what, she couldn't get out of the city. He looked at her, puzzled. Rosen said it was just a joke. She said that she did not understand why she should be in prison for such a long time at all. She said that for murder, the sentence ranges from eight to fifty years. She admitted this possibility, but said that she did not kill. She said that she had been humiliated hundreds of times and eventually just snapped. She sincerely did not understand why she was given fifty years. Because the man who lived next door beat his wife for a long time and then completely killed her, and he was sentenced to only eight years. He pointed to the shelf with his finger. She looked at him in shock, not understanding what he was doing. He said that the reason for such a long period should be spelled out in legislation. Rosen sat and looked at the books and scrolls. She, embarrassed, said that she could not read. Connor said he knew about it. Connor looked at her and said that everything is spelled out in the law. The girl was a little dumbfounded because she knew that he was not going to explain or read the law to her. He was just making fun of her. Connor looked at her and said that she was only sentenced to life on the island because of her guilt. He looked at her and said that he had been with her too long. And she had to return to her cell. She was furious and screamed at him to wait a minute, because I still wanted to finish. Connor said their conversation was over. She wanted to talk to him more and said that she would not leave. The young girl knew that she couldn't leave so easily. She knew she couldn't leave him with nothing. She had to quickly put her Alan into action. She looked at him and realized that there would be no such chance again. And she needed to do something quickly. She thought she needed to say something, something crazy and delusional, to hook him. This was her last chance. She didn't know what to tell him to hook him and continue the conversation. She looked after him and shouted with rage that he was the same as the others. Rosen hoped that such words would resonate with him. She looked at him and said that he was also an idiot. He was furious at her words and only asked what she said. She looked at him and said that he himself said that an idiot and a hero are the same. Rosen looked at him and asked if she was wrong. She said that he is a solar hero and she is a dark hero and they are both idiots. She looked at him with contempt and asked how they were different from each other since no one believed that they could win the war. She said that they were just a small country distinguished only by the pompous addition of an empire, while Talus had already captured several states. But in the end, they won. She looked at him and said that he had correctly noted that they had won, but it was an absolutely empty victory. She didn't understand what they finally got from her. Rosen said that his hero, in a beautiful uniform, was sent to escort pathetic prisoners like her. Rosen did not understand why war heroes were now doing such work. Connor was furious at her words, shouting at her to shut her mouth and not speak to him again. Rosen rejoiced at her small victory. She saw that he was caught in her network. He, in turn, shouted that she should not say too much. Rosen expected him to hit her. She said that their victory was quite graceful, and now there is something to be proud of. Rosen knew that enduring momentary pain was not a problem. She wanted him to press her firmly to the floor, with his military boots. Rosen knew she would be fine as she was used to the pain, 
but Connor just looked at her with rage and contempt. Connor hesitated a little, but after a few minutes he said that her words were true. Rosen was shocked because she didn't expect him to say something like that. Connor looked at her and said that she had no right to say them, even though they were true. Connor said that in the skies above his homeland, countless of his comrades died, and history will not remember them, and no one will remember. But even I know about this. They sacrificed their lives. He said that he believes that people like her, who only know how to run away, are obliged to feel reverent gratitude to them for this. He said that at least she should not insult them. He hoped that she would understand everything. Connor said that it seemed like the girl was now trying to provoke him in order to get his attention. Connor came closer to her and told her to stop trying to pull off such obvious tricks. He said that such provocations would not fool him, and if she wanted to achieve compassion, then it was better for her to look for another person. She was shocked, because a moment ago he was angry with her, and now he acted completely differently. She looked at him and said that she was not lying. He looked at her and said with a smile that she really didn't surprise him. He said that in fact there is no need for such chains in this sea. However, she was still shackled in them as a symbol of the severity of her crime. She listened to his words from his lips, and in her head two completely opposite-sounding voices overlapped each other. She recalled the moments when planes flew and scattered leaflets with his image, and also said greetings in his voice. She looked at him and said that he really was an idiot. He said that he fully understood what she was like. So, there will be no more personal conversations. She looked at him from behind and realized that she had missed her chance to escape. But she also knew that she could not give up in turn. She only heard his voice, which told her to go back. Rosen stood near the door, confused. She really didn't understand what she expected from him, but she hoped that maybe she could talk to him again someday. She recalled the words he said before the war, he said that the citizens of the Empire could be calm and no one would hurt them. They were told that if an air raid signal sounds, they need to put out the fire and go down into the dungeon and listen to the radio, and he, in turn, will protect the sky above them. She knew that, most likely, she had overheard his voice, and without realizing it, she constantly forgot about reality and disappeared into a strange self-deception. She wondered if she would ever talk to him again and if she would be able to hear his warm voice again. Well, Rosen still knew that she was very much mistaken, and this couldn't happen. But still, she sincerely hoped for a miracle. She was furious and screaming because she was already fed up with everything. She screamed at him furiously because she knew he had become a hero, but she also knew that she wouldn't let him break her. Her underscore. Rosen knew that she would definitely have another chance and would win. Henry approached her and asked with a smile what she was doing. He chuckled as he noticed that she had tied up her hair and wiped her face. He said that if she had something red, she would have painted her lips. She looked at him and smiled, saying that it was nice to look at her clean. She asked him if she wasn't really pretty. He did not understand what she was saying and said that her words sounded ridiculous. He looked at her and asked what trick she used this time. She said she was just saving drinking water. The young man looked and told her not to play the fool because no matter what trick she used on him, it would not work. She was surprised by asking him if he knew what trick she uses. The young man hesitated. He said he didn't know exactly what, but he was sure of some. Rosen was shocked and regretted that Connor was not as simple as a young man. She looked at him and said with a grin that when a man and a woman are left alone between them, something can happen, and this is not a trick, but just a relationship. The young man shouted at her, and wanted her to shut her mouth and not say such things again. She looked at him and asked him with a smirk if he was interested in her. He was furious and did not understand what she was saying. She decided to finish him off and said that since he always talks about some kind of tricks, then he is definitely interested in her. She said that she sees everything in her eyes. He was furious and said that he simply would not talk to her and that was all. Rosen grinned at him and said that they could be friends. He shouted at her to go faster. Rosen accidentally saw a little girl whom she had already seen in the dungeon. She was surprised that the girl was running alone again. Rosen was struck by the fact that no one was watching the girl. Rosen saw that Lila took out some candy. The girl was furiously happy that she could eat it. Rosen looked at her and realized that she was running around fearlessly again. She didn't understand how she could leave the girl alone in such a place. Rosen looked at the young man and realized that he and the girl were indeed somewhat similar. Rosen looked at the young man and asked him to stop to listen to something. 
Henry was at a loss. She leaned closer to him and said that his niece was cute and asked if her name was Layla. He was in shock and did not understand what she was saying. He didn't understand how she knew about the girl. Rosen smiled and said it wasn't hard to find out. The young man was furious and out of fear for the girl, threw the keys to the door on the floor. Rosen looked at his frightened face and asked if he was scared. The young man looked intently at his niece. Rosen looked at the young man and asked why he was so afraid. She was handcuffed and couldn't do anything to the girl. The young man said that she was definitely a witch. He said he thought that way even when everyone said it wasn't true. He looked at her and shouted that he would soon bring her to clean water. Henry was furiously angry and threatened her because he was worried that she might hurt Lila. But Rosen smiled and said that he could think what he wanted. He was furious and only asked if she was serious. When the young man shouted, the little girl was afraid. Rosen looked at the young girl and realized that something was wrong. She burst into tears and trembled. She touched her throat with her hands and could not answer. Rosen was in shock and realized that she had something stuck in her throat. She frantically screamed to urgently call a doctor. She knew that there must be at least one doctor on the ship. She shook the young man and shouted for him to answer her quickly. Henry stood rooted to the spot and looked at his niece. He was confused and scared. Rosen screamed for him to finally come to his senses. She did not understand what had happened to him and realized that it was useless to ask him about anything or say anything. She screamed for someone to come and help them, but no one rushed to their aid. Rosen understood that the part of the ship where they were located was uninhabited. She was at a loss and did not understand what to do and how to do it. She looked at the young man and shouted that she knew what to do, so he needed to free her immediately. Rosen remembered how she once read a document about first aid or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. At that time, she did not know why Emily gave her such a document. She didn't understand why she needed to know anything about this at all. Emily told her that a person is a very fragile creature, and therefore you can die under any circumstances, and for the most absurd reasons. She told her that not everyone can wield magic, but every person can acquire knowledge. Rosen realized that anyone would need this kind of help at some point. She ran to the girl. People came out of their rooms to see what the noise was. They whispered and said that the little girl was in trouble. They wanted to know if everything was okay. Some said that the girl saved the little girl. Everyone looked furiously at what had happened. Rosen hugged the little girl in tears. She was shocked by the whole situation, but knew one thing. She managed it and was able to help Lila. Lila cried furiously because I was very scared, but she was very glad that they helped her and she remained alive. Rosen was very glad that she still saved the child. The young man ran up to his niece. He asked in tears if everything was okay with her. People came out of the cabins and asked what had happened, since some had arrived late and had not seen everything. Some said the girl grabbed the child and administered first aid. Lila told her uncle that she had something stuck in her throat. Everyone whispered and said that trouble almost happened, but the girl was still able to correct the situation. Some said that they had seen a young girl somewhere, but did not remember where. Rosen turned around and saw the candy. She realized that the little girl had been holding candy in her hands before the incident. Rosen exhaled with relief and laughed. She realized that a bullet or candy, however, could kill a person. Rosen understood that in this case, not only the military could save or kill. She now realized that her friend had once been right. She saw that the young man had finally come to his senses. Rosen asked Henry if her skills were useful to him. She said that if he was grateful to her, then he could give her water so that she could wash herself or leave a package in the cell. He didn't answer her, and she was surprised and asked why he was silent. She smiled and said that this was just payment for life. Raising her head, she saw Connor. She was surprised by his appearance. He looked at Rosen in surprise. The girl was shocked by his appearance. Rosen looked at him and asked why he was there when suddenly they heard someone else approaching them. Layla's grandfather approached them. Lila, in turn, was very glad that he came. He asked her if everything was okay with her. The young people were closely watching all this. Rosen saw her grandfather, a young girl she remembered how Lila told her that he was the captain of the ship. She watched them closely and was very glad that everything ended well. Rosen looked at Connor for us and said that she just said everything and she didn't help at all because she wanted a reward. The man looked at her and said that such a reward was a mere trifle. He said in a calm voice that the army of the empire always pays for a life saved. 
Rosen was a little puzzled by this answer. He said that even if she was a criminal, that she would be imprisoned on the island, it made no difference, and she would still receive a reward. She looked at him and thanked him. Connor removed the chains from her. Rosen asked if he would allow her to wash. The man said that he would allow it, but her hands should be shackled. She was a little puzzled, because she did not understand how she could wash in this case. He said that he could imagine people who would wait on her. The captain of the ship approached them. He was shocked by the man's behavior. He said that he had no manners towards a woman. He did not understand how he was taught at all. The captain was shocked that the man had chained the savior. Rosen was shocked by such pressure from the captain. She didn't expect to be treated like this. The man was confused. And Rosen, in turn, understood that the captain was a very important shot. She did not expect such treatment, since she was just a prisoner. The captain said that he ordered Henry to take all the passengers to their cabins, and he also added that the commander could have released the lady for a while, since there was only the sea all around. The man said that he could not let her go. The captain was furious and said that he could, since everything in the world could be done. The captain didn't understand why Connor was being so rude. Connor said that based on the law of the empire, he cannot do this. The captain, in turn, shouted that such excuses would not work on him, Rosen sat and watched the entire performance, wondering how their argument would end. The captain said that the laws that work on land do not work at sea, and the indignant captain shouted that he is the law on the ship. Rosen clapped while standing at such a speech. The captain pointed to Rosen and said that she was his granddaughter's savior. He didn't understand how Connor could behave this way with his savior. The captain said that at the very least the chains needed to be removed while he expressed his gratitude to her. He said that he did not understand with what face he should thank her, while she was in shackles in front of him. Rosen saw Lila approaching her with a wide smile on her face. Rosen saw the girl and smiled at her and greeted her. Connor, in turn, shouted to the captain that the girl was a criminal. The captain looked at his granddaughter and told Connor that she was a savior first and foremost. He was incredibly glad that the girl was able to save his granddaughter, since he loved her very much and doted on her. But Connor did not fall for all the talk and tricks, Captain. He argued that the girl was first and foremost a criminal. Connor, in turn, was unshakable. The captain was furious and shouted at Connor. He didn't understand how he could always put his two cents in where it wasn't needed. Connor asked the captain to calm down. He said that he was a military man, carrying out an order received from his superiors, and there could be no exceptions. But the captain ignored his words. He approached the savior, he asked for forgiveness for the man's bad manners and asked her to accept his gratitude. Rosen was shocked and stood spellbound looking at the captain as she did not expect such words from him. The captain came even closer and said that he had completely forgotten to introduce himself. He also asked for an apology for his mistake. The girl was even more surprised. The captain said he had retired, but once upon a time he was an admiral in the Navy. He said his name was Alexa Revila. She was shocked and asked if by chance the bronze statue of a war hero in the Capitol Square was not in his honor. He laughed and said that he was very glad that she recognized him. Rosen was delighted to see such a great man with her own eyes. The girl was very surprised, of course. She understood that, of course, she had heard about him, since he was a hero of the old war. Even children like her, who were never given the opportunity to look at the school, got to see the portrait of the hero. He was incredibly influential. She looked at him and was shocked as she did not expect that Revel would be the one, and was even more surprised that the young man and the little girl were his relatives. She looked at him and realized that they did not go together at all. She looked at him and said that her name is neither Lady nor Chaos. Her name is Rosen Walker. She looked at him and asked if he knew about it. The captain looked at her and asked if he could call her Miss Walker then. He said that he would call her as she wanted. The captain looked at his granddaughter and said that she was his only granddaughter and if not for the young savior, she would have died today. The captain looked at her and said that he had recently heard that she would like to wash herself and eat. Rosen looked at the captain and said that she would be very grateful if water and food were brought to her cell, and she also asked for some meat. The captain looked at her and said that this was impossible. The girl was surprised. The captain said that it was impossible to treat a benefactor in this way, since he was from the Rivel family. He looked at her and said, if she didn't have anything planned tomorrow night, he would like her to grace them with her presence at the dinner party. Rosen was shocked because she didn't expect him to say something like that. 
She understood perfectly well that she was a criminal in the eyes of other people, and it was a big shock for her when he proposed such an idea to her. She imagined the whole situation at the dinner party and realized that she was embarrassed to even imagine and think about it. She knew that she had to refuse such a tempting offer. The captain looked at the girl and said that if she found it difficult, then she need not worry about it, since it was not some kind of grand event, but an ordinary dinner with his family. She looked at the captain and realized that among all the men he was the most grandiose. Rosen stood and did not answer, when suddenly she heard Connor's voice. Connor looked at everything and told the captain that his proposal was too much. Connor said that the girl was a commoner and had no place at such a dinner, but Rosen knew what the man was thinking and what words came to mind. Weak, poor, unhappy, and abandoned people. There was always a hope in her heart that her squadron would be a strong defense for such people. Connor looked at her and said that she was a killer, and therefore she should not be at the same table with them. Rosen thanked the captain. The man was surprised that she spoke first. The girl looked at the captain and said that she would gladly accept his offer. She said that she saw no point in refusing such an offer, since she was always hungry. Rosen said she can eat even with her hands cuffed. Connor looked at her and said, even if he sees her plotting an escape. Rosen said she wouldn't run away anyway. Rosen looked at Connor and said that he was kind enough to show her how terrifying the creatures were in the sea. The man glanced sideways at Rosen, but said nothing. The girl looked at Rosen and asked, in an embarrassed voice, if she was collecting leaflets again. Rosen said she was just passing by, that's all. The girl looked at her and said that she seemed to have a serious addiction. The girl looked at Rosen and told her to try to hide them so that no one would see. Rosen didn't want to admit the obvious, but she probably had unreasonably higher hopes for the man, and so every time she was convinced that he was not at all what she imagined him to be. At the sight of a man, she began to get unbearably angry. Rosen knew that Connor should have remained the man of her fantasy. Rosen looked at Connor and asked with a smile if what she was saying was true. The girl woke up and did not understand where she was. She was in a luxurious cabin. She didn't understand what she was doing in such a place. But she knew that this was definitely not her cabin. She felt so good that she didn't want to think about anything and just wanted to sleep some more. Suddenly, the maids knocked on her door and entered. They asked for forgiveness and also asked her how she slept at night. Rosen was surprised and puzzled because she didn't understand why. They introduced themselves to her and asked for forgiveness for waking her up, but they said she needed to wash herself before the water got cold. The maids came closer to her and said that the bath was very close. So they had to go because they thought it was better to wash in warm water. After spending a long time with the piranhas, Rosen finally went with them. She took a warm bath and realized that she was in real heaven. Slowly her memories came to her, she remembered that the captain invited her to dinner as a thank you. She didn't like Connor's reaction, and therefore agreed to spite him, after which she was brought to the royal mansions. She sat in the bathroom and enjoyed the peace and water, since such a privilege had not been available to her before. After everything that happened to her, she even forgot the last time she took a bath. A maid approached her and said that she had one question for her. She passionately wanted to know if it was true that the girl was a witch. Rosen was puzzled, and asked if they really believed this. The girl said that she was right after all. The maid said that they simply heard that Lady Lila was dating a witch, and she very much asked that everything be kept secret. Rosen looked at them and said that children often immediately take things at face value. The maid smiled and said that the lady was a very sweet and naive girl. The maid came closer to Rosen and asked if she was missing something and offered to add more hot water. Rosen said everything was fine and they didn't need to make a fuss. The maid said that the captain gave them clear instructions. Rosen said she's fine with it and they can worry about you. The more and longer Rosen was warm, the more cold wind she felt. She knew that she had no need to get used to such warmth. She knew that such warmth had always been just a luxury for her. In the past, she didn't know this, but now everything was different. She foolishly rushed into other arms for the sake of such warmth she knew that she would not make such a mistake again. She bowed her head towards the bathtub and once again told herself that this would not happen again. Her thoughts were interrupted. She heard a noise. The maids were shouting to someone that the lady was taking a bath and should not be disturbed. The young man shouted that he himself did not want to come to her, but he was obliged to keep watch. The maids said that they were quite enough and everything would be all right. They were shocked that he decided to come to her. They said that it would be enough for him to stand in front of the door. The young man said that he was simply left with no choice. 
Rosen covered her body with a towel and came out to them. She looked at them and asked furiously if the young man had anything he wanted to tell her. She was furious at the young man's behavior and asked again what he wanted to tell her. Everyone was stunned by the moment that she came out to them like that. The maids were shocked and asked what she was doing. The young man could not believe that she had decided to do such a trick. He looked at her and asked if she knew he was a man. Rosen said with her most straight face that she knew about it. The young man was puzzled, but he knew that he had to talk to her, since he simply had no choice. Henry looked at the maids and asked if they could leave him alone with her. The maids were shocked by such impudent behavior. The young man said that it was only for a minute, since he needed to tell her confidential information. The maids did not understand why he wanted to do this now, since he could wait until she got dressed and then tell her everything. The young man said that Sir Connor ordered the information to be conveyed immediately. But still, the maids did not want to follow the young man's lead. Henry said that this was the commander's order and it was not discussed. Rosen was shocked that the man showed up to her and kicked out all the decent people. She asked if he was going to accidentally interrogate her personally. He said that she had nothing to examine since she was naked. Henry asked if she thought he was a pervert. The girl said that in the current situation, he is most likely a pervert. He came closer to her and said to stay put, as he will leave immediately after you tell her something important. Rosen froze in bewilderment. She climbed back into the bathroom and said that he really was a lousy liar. The young man was furious. She told him to think for himself why he should have sent a lieutenant to her at the moment when she was taking a bath. The young man did not answer her. Rosen smiled and said that he came to her because he personally needed to tell her something. She wondered what he wanted to tell her. Henry said it was a secret conversation. She said that his commander could well have ordered a guard at the door, but he certainly would not have given him the order to go inside. The young man was embarrassed and did not say anything to her. She told him not to pretend to be a boss and to quickly tell her everything. The young man said that the conversation concerned his niece. Rosen told the young man to forgive her, but he really was no good. Henry was upset and said that there was nothing to cover for this. Rosen asked if the girl was okay. Henry said she was fine and had been examined by doctors. Rosen knew something was wrong. She asked him if he was really a pilot. The young man said that he destroyed more than 50 enemy aircraft. Rosen asked why he was so shy then. He said that he also had a sister, Lila, their daughter. Henry asked her if she knew that there was a bombing in the city she fled from. The girl said she knew. He asked her if she was in town that day. She was not there because that day she made her first escape and she found out about everything only when she was already in Alcafez. She heard from someone that Ryorhythm had disappeared. Henry said his sister was there and Lila too. He said she was a newborn baby at the time. Rosen listened to all this and did not believe it, but the city was quite large, and she could not understand how it could disappear in just one day. The young man said that he had the opportunity to prevent this, but although he knew that his sister and Layla were there, he could not stop the bombing. The girl sat and had mixed feelings. She knew it had nothing to do with her, and she didn't want to know. She asked him why he couldn't stop it. The young man said that during the flight, they did not notice the enemy squadron. The planes separated. They headed towards Malone and towards Trirotano. The commander knew that the capital of the Malona Empire and their hometown. He had to make a choice, and the man said that they would defend Milan. Henry said Connor made the right choice. The young man said that everything was inevitable, and he does not hold a grudge against him. As a result, they spent the entire war in airplanes. He thought that he had overcome everything, but after the end of the war, he could no longer sit in the cockpit. Something in his head broke. The young man told the girl that she was right, and now he is not the same person he was before, since he can no longer pilot. But he knew that his niece was here next to him, and everything was fine. The girl listened to him attentively, but did not say anything. Rosen said he hated her because she survived being a criminal. While his innocent sister died, she said it deserves to be hated. People always need a hero to admire and a person to whom they can safely place all the blame. The hero and the witch are one, like two sides of the same coin. The young man said that he had come to apologize after all. Rosent was in shock. I didn't understand why he had to apologize. He said that he bothered her and that he showed her monsters by luring them with fish fillets. The girl was surprised and realized that it was his idea. The young man said that in any case, his niece would probably have suffered if not for her, he thanked her again for saving his niece. The maid stood outside the door and whispered. 
They didn't know whether they should go in or stay outside the door. The maid saw Sir Connor. The young man thanked her again for the table, a brave act. Rosen asked if he came to her empty-handed. The young man said that he was truly grateful. So I asked her not to spoil the moment. The girl said that she was not joking. She looked at him and said with a smile that he needed to prove his sincerity. He said he could pay her, but he didn't understand what she would do with the money. Rosen said he could give her something else. He was shocked and said that his situation would not allow him. She smiled and said that his family paid very stingily for a life saved. She looked at him and asked if it was just the fact that she was a prisoner that was a problem. She asked him if he really thought she killed someone. She asked whether his attitude would change if he knew that she did not kill him, or if he finds out that she suffered hundreds of humiliations and later broke down and killed him. She said, maybe she had her reasons. He was shocked and said that he couldn't hear her. He asked her not to bother him with all sorts of unnecessary conversations. He said he didn't want to hear that from her. The girl said that she never lies. The young man was implicated if he said that her words were difficult to believe, since she had recently said that she did not need a reward. She said that it was true, but he himself came here and forced her to speak, and she became proud. He looked at her but didn't answer. She said that she realized that she needed to forget about the keys, since it would be difficult for her to leave by sea on the lifeboat. She smiled and told him to come closer, as she wanted to ask him something. He was shocked, but the girl said that she didn't bite at all and he could come closer. She pulled his sleeve. He was in shock. He didn't understand what she was up to again. Rosen said that it was nothing. She just wanted to tell him a small request. She asked him if he would do this. The last words were heard by Sir Connor. He stormed into the room with rage. He saw the young people very close to each other. He was in shock and did not understand what they were doing. The young man was shocked and muttered something inaudibly to his commander. He looked at him and asked what he was doing. Rosen watched from the side, but could not say anything. The young man shouted to his commander that this was not what he was thinking about. Connor told Henry that he had better now get a convincing explanation about the situation. The young man hesitated. I didn't know what to say. The commander was shocked and threw the young man out the door. The maid stood and looked at him sitting on the floor. The girl looked at the menacing expression on the commander's face and realized that she was finished. He gave her a blanket and asked her to sit down for a minute. She wrapped herself in a blanket and sat down. Rosen was at a loss and didn't know what he would do. She looked intently at the menacing expression on his face and did not understand how long he would stand and remain silent. The situation and atmosphere around them was very tense. Connor, stunned, did not know where to start the conversation. He looked at her with sadness and puzzlement and asked if by any chance Henry did anything to her against her will. Rosen looked at him in confusion, but did not answer. Connor looked at her and asked if the young man was trying to force her to do something. The girl was furious and screamed that he didn't do anything to her. Connor asked if he touched her or her body without her permission. She screamed that he didn't do anything. She didn't understand what he was even talking about. He looked at her and said that she could tell him everything without hiding, and also said that if she wanted, he would change the warden for her all the way to the island. He said that he would not allow anyone to get close to her. She was in shock and did not understand what he was saying at all. Rosen asked if the young man was not his lieutenant. He said that if he did something to her, then he would no longer be his lieutenant. The girl said that he seemed to have forgotten something because she was just a witch and he was a hero. She looked at him and said that Henry was a man on his side. He was confused and did not understand why she was saying this. Rosen looked at him intently and did not understand at all what the conversation was about and why he treated her this way. With a smile on her face, she asked him if he did not trust his subordinates. She didn't understand how he even got through the war. Sir Connor said that he truly hated people who did this. Even if the young man was a good subordinate, it did not mean that he was blameless. The girl said that in truth, nothing happened between them. He was confused and looked at her intently. She just knew that it was better to dispel all misunderstandings. Otherwise, she felt somehow ashamed. She said they were just chatting and nothing more. The man asked what they were talking about. Rosen said they talked about Lila because he was too embarrassed to thank her in front of the others for saving his niece. She said she doesn't play with boring kids like him. She looked at the man and asked why she should do something if nothing works. Connor was a little surprised. Rosen asked what a prisoner could get from a warden, and the same thing vice versa. She said he just got it all wrong. He looked at her and said that he sincerely did not understand how people could fall for her lies. 
He said it was clear she was just looking for the right opportunity. Rosen was confused. Connor looked at her and said that even now she was being serious too, obviously. She looked at him and asked if he wanted to know the reason. Rosen, looking at Connor, said that she never cheats. Rosen said that people just pretend to be deceived. He looked at her and did not understand what she wanted to say. The girl said that it doesn't matter at all whether she knows how to lie or not. Everyone only hears what they want to hear anyway. She said that no one really needs the truth. Rosen knew that people just needed someone to blame for all their crimes and grievances. She said that everyone just needed a scapegoat whom they could curse with peace of mind. She looked at him and with a smile said that she only says what she wants to say. And it doesn't matter what she says, her words will never change anything. He looked at her intently without taking his eyes off. Connor knew that to some extent she was right. She looked at him and said that one thing was clear. He was a true hero, as he had a strong sense of justice that he even cared about a prisoner like her. He looked at her and timidly asked if she considered him a hero. She looked at him and asked if it was strange that someone like her could admire a hero. He looked at the floor and said that he liked her too. After the words were spoken, he was in shock because he did not expect that I would confess to her. Rosen said that she was also a citizen of the Empire and collected his photographs that fell from the sky. He was surprised when he heard that she collected photographs. She was surprised because she understood that there was nothing special about it. The girl said that he himself should know. The man was at a loss. She smiled and said he was handsome. He stared at her and said nothing. Rosen was shocked by herself because she didn't want to say that. She said that, in general, it didn't matter and asked him to take his subordinate and leave as soon as possible. He got up and wanted to go. Rosen told him to call the maids so that they wouldn't help her get dressed. She said that after he got away, he could put on chains. She said that if he was worried that she was in a hurry, then let Henry stand outside the door, just so as not to peep, he walked up to her and gave her his hand. She was surprised. For several moments she sat and stared at his hand, not understanding what was happening. He looked at her and said that he was not angry at all. He said that he was just simply confused. Rosen asked why he was confused. He remembered her words when she said that he was the same. She said she thought they were similar in some ways. Rosen was frozen in confusion. She didn't remember ever saying something like that and didn't understand in what way they were similar. Connor told her to come with him. Rosen was lost and didn't know where they needed to go. He said that it was time for her to put on something since her long-awaited dinner was waiting for her. She said that was why he needed to go out so she could get dressed. Holding her hand, he pulled her closer to him. Rosen couldn't stay on her feet and almost fell on him. She screamed for him to wait, but the man picked her up like a little girl and threw her over his shoulder. She was in shock and didn't understand how he could do this to her because she wasn't some kind of sack. Rosen said she was wildly apologetic and asked if such behavior was really necessary since she could have just called the girls. Connor asked her why he would suddenly believe her. He said that he knew what she was up to and he shouldn't have listened to the captain in the first place. She was shocked and said that he could just tell Henry to follow her. Connor said that after everything that happened, he doesn't even trust him. He said that he would control everything himself. Connor said he was too rude to her. She was furious and did not understand when he had ever been discourteous to her. The man said she saved the child. He said that the only human heart whose heart cannot tremble before her is his. You looked at him and said with a smile that he was afraid that she wouldn't run away and told him to have a gun. He looked at her and said that she had noticed correctly, because he is afraid of her. He said that because it seemed to him that they were similar in some way, he was afraid of her for the wrong reasons. Rosen was shocked by these words addressed to her. He called the maids. The girl was confused and did not understand how she should be afraid. She knew that they were afraid if only she was alone, and this was a clear fact. The man stood outside the door and smoked nervously. She didn't understand that he was afraid at all.